so the squirrel rat trap um, I had another look at it after a few comments last night um, I've adjusted it to make it go off much easier um, so how I did it was the trigger stick bait stick whatever I've cut it much shorter so that's the original one you can see how much longer it was there now it's much shorter and now I've cut this bit off and shortened it as well so it makes the door come up higher and seems to go off much easier but now you need a certain technique to set it it's a bit of a weird one because it took me ages to figure it out because I kept looking and trying it was near near enough impossible to set unless you had your foot on the front so then I just thought I'd try it like this because what happens is as you start pulling this obviously down look the front wants to come up but the best way to do it is like that and then pull it up just try to do this so you can see it hopefully the bait stick already in there And then just bring it down how you want it so like I said it brings the door much higher now but it kind of gets to the point where the spring isn't so hard on it if you know what I mean you can bring it back even further and it will actually sit there which I didn't actually realize which the reason I didn't realize is because this bar here got in the way you know it touched the back there as soon as I cut that off, I realised that you could pull this up and actually sit there. So you want it just before that, if you know what I mean. I will attempt to just drop a pencil on the end of it. So as you can see there goes off easy even just dropping a light pencil on it will set it off now so just pull that up hook it I hook it on it's hooked you know inside and then hook the back part on keep your finger there get it good that's pretty much the only way to set it on a table the other way which does work because this strikes about there can just about put your foot on the end of it and then you can do it quite easily on the floor but I reckon you could put a screw in there or something and use it as a place to put your foot that's one way to set it on the floor the other way is the way I've just done it um, another thing is since I've got it higher I noticed it was actually smashing the whole trap apart so I've had to re-screw it all um, put more screws in here and there hold it together it's actually smashing down so hard it's actually demolishing it I reckon if you maybe drilled a hole there and at the back either had more of the wood sticking out or a couple of um, like eye loops you could actually attach this to a tree and it would work so you could actually use it like that on a tree anything like that like I said before, um, I didn't try it with the rat because the rat wouldn't set it off. It was just so hard, you'd push down as hard as you could and the rat would not set it off. But now it will. As you can see, quite easily as well. So in a minute, if you want, I'll give you all the dimensions to this. So you know the sizes if you want to make your own. Oh yeah, also, um, another thing I wanted to say was... Um, if you want to check out a good channel with some really good traps on it traps in action as well catching fairly big animals check out the rogue trappers channel I'll put a link in if I remember but the rogue trapper um, excellent videos I'm surprised he hasn't got you know hundreds of thousands of subscribers really because he's got videos like showing you know real evidence of these traps working catching fairly big animals um, over in America decent channel really decent traps 
um, well proves that you can catch things with paracord as well, stuff like that. Right, so I'll tell you the dimensions of this so you know. So these two side bits are do it in centimetres. So eleven centimetres like that. And seven and a half centimetres that way. The back is five centimetres that way and seven centimetres that way. The bottom is seven. What do I say them ones was? Eleven and a half. Well, about eleven. So that would be about the same, about eleven. I'm slightly off that one, but about ten and a half to eleven. Your top bit is about seven and a half that way. Should be about what do I say these ones was? About no, actually that one's slightly shorter. Six and a half. You want to cut that one slightly shorter, like thinner, to make sure it fits between here. So that one's six and a half that way. Seven and a half that way. This back bar. This part, the top of it, nine, the bottom, seven and a half because it, you know, it goes down at an angle. Use any bit for that. That is one and a half, one and a half. Um, oh, and the front door part. So the front door again is six and a half by. there to there six. Oh, and the bait stick is ten and a half and your triggers on it to there two and a half to there six and a half and then this notch that one is just a tie bait on so that could just be any way you see fit. Um, hinge at the back the two screws they are about two and a half centimetres down and about just under five there and do the same the other side. Your hinge is just like that. You don't have to do a hinge, you could actually do this, make it about, well, make it as high as this is, so these bits of wood have them about one and a half to two centimetres higher on each side and just put a screw going straight through if you know what I mean. Right, so while I'm here, what I'm going to do is going to answer some of the questions, uh, not questions, the comments what you've given me. So, um, Kent Costello said I'm going to build one or two for me tree rats we got in the yard. Right, Kent, so follow them dimensions or you could probably make them a little bit bigger if you want to. Marcus Brackley said, good one, Malk. Sounds like you had a touch of what the author guy in Stephen King's Misery had, hopefully without the broken legs. Yeah. Um, regarding the trigger, could you make the bait more inaccessible so the prey has to struggle with it and thereby more likely set it off? When I used to use those wooden rat traps with a big yellow treadle plate, I would duct tape a roll plug to it stuffed with peanut butter. The rat would, be a, the rat would still be able to strongly smell it, but, would, but to get at it... Without, uh, without a big struggle and then the air will snap and you can make the trigger capable of holding peanut butter or wrap it in duct tape. You definitely do the job, just my two pennies worth. Yeah, well, I reckon that's a good idea, Marcus. Um, definitely now that I've made that shorter, the whole thing is definitely better. It goes off much easier, but I reckon doing something like that would definitely improve it as well. Uh, yeah, and it's weird, this kind of block I get. It's really strange. You just go for all of a sudden... You know, I can go for ages, and I think of every idea, and I could probably do three videos a day. And then all of a sudden, that just goes... And I've got lists, like, written down, but I just can't... I'll just look at them and think, nah, I just can't do that. <laughs> really weird. 
uh, Tony Constantinople said, yeah, you got to take a break now and again. Don't know how you managed to pull out all the vids you do, mate. So Steve said, nice build. Sam said, <coughs> nice idea, Matt. When you were talking about how difficult it was for the trigger to go off, this seems a problem with many primitive triggers. A possible series that would be informative is using a fishing scale to figure out the ratio between engine pressure and pressure for trigger release. Using different trigger and engine combinations. An example of what I'm saying, a few years back I took a 30 pound dumbbell and hung it over a horizontal beam. I hooked a pivoting trigger to it and I knew that the engine weight was at least 30 pound with friction. I used a handheld fishing scale to pull the trigger. It took just under two pounds of pressure to set off the trap. This giving me approximately one point, a 15 to 1 ratio, hence why the pivot trigger is one of my favourites. Toggle triggers seem to have a good ratio too also. Yeah, well, do you know what? That was one of the things I wanted to try ages ago, kind of things like that, testing and all that. But to be honest, it started getting so confusing, I couldn't figure out anything to do. And it just seemed too complicated, for me anyway. And also, I didn't want to do kind of misleading tests which I didn't know what I was on about if you know what I mean so that's why I didn't really do them in the end but I suppose I could still do that you know you could tell, tell people weights and all that so that is one thing I could do and then the Rogue Trapper answered Sam a load of times on the thing and like I said the Rogue Trapper on his comments he knows what he's on about and check out his channel really good channel if you want to see some real stuff in action or proper primitive type traps um, Tony Napoli said, nice video, plenty of scope on that trap, mate. Have a little time out, give your brain a rest. Yeah. Who knows it? So I suppose there would have to come a time when ideas are hard to come by. Start at your oldest video and look for uh, ones that could do with an update. New title, bit of new info or wording. No big announcement, just update your channel library one at a time. That's actually a really good idea because I had some really good old videos which... um was put really poorly um, filmed on bad cameras, so I could probably do some of them. Simon Ridley said, oh no, we've got um, Krylon103112, it's a great trap, maybe sanding out the trigger parts would smooth things out, or use bent wire for the trigger. Screws on the killing part might increase the killing power. L brackets might reinforce the top and front. Yeah, great idea, mate. Well, definitely we've already improved it with that, but all them other ideas are good as well. Simon Ridley said, good to see you back, mate. Any lunchtime videos planned? The funny thing was, I was going to do one the other day, and then, to be honest, I was really tired, so I just thought I'll have a break rather than do a video. But definitely planned to, definitely. Uh, Marcus, no, where are we? Larry Fisher said, the further the trap door is open, the less forward force on the door because the spring... You're trying to pull the door straight up and down to set your trigger back so it's at the, at the door's balance point. And you can make it li much lighter because it won't take as deep of notches to hold it in place. Larry Fisher, absolutely brilliant. And that was your comment what made me cut that shorter. So nice one, mate. Marcus Rayner said, you could put some nails in the part that comes down on the rat, snip the heads off so the nails come to a point. That would deter the rat or squirrel escaping when the trap is triggered. Yeah, that's... Good idea. Funny thing is I was going to do it on this one, but I thought I'd just shorten the thing down. But that's definitely a good idea. Put them on there easy. Leonard Christopher's a great video, Mark. Um, think everyone gets that sometimes. Could just be the time of year. Always look forward to your uploads. Keep up the good work. Cheers, Leonard. Yeah, that could be. You never know. I think mean, it's just, I get like that like once, you know, once a couple of, every couple of months. Mr. Six Gun said you're a great man for sure. Cheers, mate. William Kinney said good one, Mel. Cheers, William. Meredith Mayhem said, what would you recommend for slightly larger steel versions? Great idea. A hardened, polished metal trigger would make it more sensitive. I'll make a VR. I'd like to see that, mate, definitely. Yeah. Well, I reckon you can make it out of metal, but you've got to know your metal work, if you know what I mean. Iron Man Spartan said, nice trap, mate. Bushcraft Bums said... Awesome video, my friend. Thanks for sharing. Have a blessed day. Cheers, mate. Cheers, Iron Man Spartan. A Mad Dog Survival said, Brilliant idea. Love it. Definitely worth keep trying to tweak that. I'm glad it's not just me that gets blocked. Burnout too. 
I've got a list of videos to do and kit to show, but sometimes for whatever reason I just can't do it. I think it's good to have a break from time to time. This YouTube thing can become too overpowering sometimes. Like it becomes a job rather than fun to do. Anyways, glad you're still at it, brother. Best wishes, mate. Cheers, mad dog. Nah, it's a weird one. Uh, I don't know whether Mike suffers for it. I don't know where asked him, but I definitely do. And just, just like that, all of a sudden, like I said, I've got a list of stuff to do. I just can't do them. I look at them and think, nah, no one's going to want to see that. But you probably would, right? That's the weird thing, do you know what I mean? Right, I hope I didn't miss any comments. Because, um, you know, sometimes they put them in weird folders, like an approved folder or whatever. But yeah, um, I think that has definitely been improved now by simply just shortening that down. And you could do some more to it. You could put a chin bar as well. Um, probably put a chin bar either side, maybe. Um, nails. All sorts of things on it, definitely. Right. Anyway, cheers for watching and I'll see you later.